YouTube, how we doing? It's Matty B here. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate all you guys watching and following along with me. It means a lot to me. Um, we've got the first four rounds of the Pro Motocross two-stroke nationals for me. Um, they are done and dusted. We uh, are finally home on a little break for for a couple weeks, so thankful for this. We finally got some time to breathe and relax and figured I would give you guys a little little report, a little summary on the first four rounds and what all went into it, kind of the ins and outs of everything and and just what it's like to be a privateer on the road with a two-stroke. Um, before I go into it too much further, um, I do want to let you guys know I still got the Patreon going. I will put a link in the description for anybody that wants to support. And like I always say, by no means am I entitled to y'all's support, but if you guys want to support, um, that's one way to do it. My Venmo and my PayPal, I'll link in the description as well. And then we just finished our first run of the t-shirts for this year. We're going to have another link up in the next day or two for our second run. We're doing a pre-order this year. A huge thank you to everyone that has bought shirts so far in support as well. Yeah, without further ado, um, let's talk about the season so far. Anyone that's followed along with me knows um, the beginning of this year was a total disaster, kind of starting out in December last year with smashing the wall at the arena crash and then a few week hospital stay, the skin graft, and then I came back and promptly ate total shit right away again at another barn cross. So I think those are probably out of the contract from here on out, not sure yet, but yeah, the beginning of the year was a total disaster, was hurt the whole time between the, con the concussion, a skin graft, and then I had a huge hematoma on my side that took like two months for me to heal up. So um, really spent like the entire winter off the bike pretty much. Um, wasn't able to ride until um, March. And then after my first week of riding in March, I ended up getting sick. So I ended up having to take another week and a half or so off after that. I'm not sure what it was, but had me feeling down bad for sure. And then Again, anybody that's followed me, followed along with my story, knows that we had the two-stroke world championship, total fiasco in April. Um, that didn't really get us anywhere as far as our prep and riding went, so um, that was kind of a waste of time as well. So the clock was ticking, we still weren't even close to ready and had no base from the year. Um, and you guys know I love, I love to race, like that's what I do, that's how I get ready for the nationals. And I only got to race two times this year before the nationals started, so definitely far from ideal. Um, but hey, that's neither here nor there. We work with what we got, no choice. And on top of that, I was having really bad problems with arm pump and my hands going numb. I think I had a pinch nerve or something in my neck or back and it was totally jacking me up. I've never had arm pump like that before. So it was just a lot of struggles from a lot of different angles. And around April, I had kind of thrown in the towel, decided it just wasn't gonna happen this year. This wasn't the year for me and was kind of making some plans on what else to do with my life and with my summer. And uh, we actually were watching the Nashville Supercross where a lot of the top guys started getting hurt and me and my girlfriend kind of looked at each other on the couch. We were like, man, like we got to try, like we can't just give up yet. So that kind of actually reignited the spark for me to go after the season was all those injuries and in Supercross. So uh, my prayers do go out to everybody that is hurt and not able to race right now. That does really suck. But um, it did open the opportunity up for some people like me to, to try to get a little bit better finishes this summer. So yeah, I decided I was going to go with it first day. I took last year's race bike down to south of the border to do some riding. And day one, I blew up last year's race bike, um, bottom end went out of it. So a totally brutal start to the training for sure. Going out of equipment on day one wasn't good, but luckily I had an awesome sponsor that helped me pick up this one behind me, a new 2023 YC252 stroke. And then um, a couple days later, headed back to south of the border and started my riding and training. Um, I got about two and a half weeks in on the bike and never really felt all that great. Never qu quite felt dialed in, but I did the time, had some 30 minute motos and um, did sprints the whole, you know, whatever I needed to do in the short time that I had, I did it. So it wasn't an ideal preparation process at all, but um, in the time that I was given and the time that I had, I felt like I did all I could. So on top of that, it also really helped that I started working with Mason at MX Cairo. He's been a huge help for me. He's been helping me with adjustments, trying to work on this pinch nerve, doing some cervical traction, um, working on my forearms and stuff as well, giving me stretches to do and just all kinds of stuff that has really helped me um, come out of that rut that I was in this winter with the arm pump and all these body issue issues. So Thank you to Mason, I appreciate you. If you guys are in the area, check out MX Cairo. He'll definitely get you right. So yeah, all the preparation, all two and a half weeks of the base was uh, complete. So definitely not like the people I'm racing against, but 
we did what we could and um, spent a couple of days here in this very room um, packing up pretty much everything I owned in the Dodge Dakota outside um, and I'm telling y'all I didn't have room for really like anything else like I brought the race bike I brought the practice bike as a rolling chassis and pretty much everything else I owned all my parts all my gear I set out on Monday morning at about 5 in the morning to head out to Cali by myself solo no choice my girlfriend had to stay and work. She's working hard here, so she wasn't able to come with me. So um, set out to Cali, drove 23 hours the first day, ended up in New Mexico and slept in the front seat of my truck in a truck stop. And uh, actually, believe it or not, got a great night of sleep. Got like a full six or seven hours in the front seat of the Dakota. So can't really complain about that. Probably didn't help the neck and back out very much, but got some sleep, woke up and then finished the rest of the drive the next day. and. I ended up getting to Temecula, California around 8 p.m. on Tuesday night, so made pretty good time and arrived um, at the Mez family's house. I got to throw a huge, huge thank you and shout out to the Mez family for letting me crash with them for a little bit over a week, and they took me in basically as part of their family for the week, so um, thank you to them. I had an awesome time. It was a great location, and uh yeah, couldn't be any more thankful for people like them that helped me do what I do, so thank y'all. The next day, Wednesday, I wasn't going to do anything, but um, they were going and riding at Paris, so I decided to tag along and, and broke in a new clutch at Paris. And uh, the bike was feeling good, or everything was as good as it could be, but the only bummer was um, because everything was done so absolutely beyond last minute, I ended up having to run the first round with a stock motor in the YZ, so definitely wasn't what we were looking for. I, I really liked my JMS um, mod head and cylinder combo, but unfortunately, just with everything being so last second, I didn't have my stuff in time, so um, headed west with a stock motor, no choice, but wasn't really worried about it. I had the paddle tire to try to make up for it and uh, was just ready to send it. On Thursday, we had press day, which was really nice to get some laps out on the Pollock course before race day. And it wasn't really much of an advantage because everybody was invited. So the track was super packed, but it was nice to just get a 30 minute session and just feel the track out, feel the bike out and uh, everything felt good. All systems go at that point. So um, Friday, we headed back to the track, just got tech tech done, all that stuff. I was going to do a Stark Varg video with uh, Brian Haskell. He was going to do the first race on the Stark Varg, and unfortunately, he ended up getting a little sick beforehand, so he didn't do it, and it didn't work out, but that's okay because um, with everything else I had going on on Friday, I'm not really sure how I would have handled that. I know I would have tried just because of the content opportunity, but I would have had my hands full for sure, so um, it's probably a blessing that that didn't work out. Was super, super fortunate. Um, Kenny Day hit me up from Fox, and he told me he had some stuff for me, and I figured he might have just had like a set of gear, maybe some gloves, and maybe some boots. Like I didn't know what was going on, and then I show up, and he's got like six sets of gear for me, a couple sets of boots, a couple helmets, and then he's been building goggles for me as well every race. So huge thank you to Kenny uh, Hoover even my boy Dusty D from Real Link Graphics and everybody at Fox, they've been treating me way better than I deserve. I've basically been feeling like a factory Fox rider. So thank you to them. I cannot tell y'all how much I appreciate it. And also I got to throw out a shout out to my boys, Jeff Morton, Joe Bumpus. They showed up with the fifth wheel trailer set up and a golf cart to haul me around in for the weekend. It was super nice to have their hospitality and uh, definitely thankful for them making the trip out to come hang with me as well. We had a lot of fun. Uh, and then one last shout out, FMF brought me a pipe to mount on the bike Friday afternoon, which was perfect timing because I actually had to JB weld my old pipe um, for press day because the mount had cracked. So thank you to FMF. Appreciate you guys. Had the smoke barking extra hard first thing Saturday morning and um, got a good night's sleep and we were ready to roll. First practice, first round of the year. and um, Man, I was hyped. I was awake at like 4.30 in the morning, got to the track way early and everything. And y'all know, I usually roll everywhere late and I was too excited I had to get to the track. First practice Saturday morning, track was super deep and muddy and there was just ruts everywhere. It was pretty sketchy and was the dirt was just weird. as California West Coast hard pack, so um, it was a little foreign to me, but my first practice was actually pretty good. I was 23rd in A, which I was really happy with, but um, the B group was absolutely barking at Paula. There was a bunch of SoCal locals and guys that just got put in the B group for some reason. I think nine of them went faster than me, so that wasn't something I was expecting, but um, it still had us well under top 36. And then the second practice, I just barely lowered my time a little bit, but it didn't give me any positions. So I ended up 34th overall, which I really was not very happy with. I was hoping to qualify more towards like top 25 or even better, especially with the guys out. But I had a stock motor, wasn't super comfortable on the track. So I guess I couldn't complain too much. And we were in the show to start out. 
Um, and considering I didn't even know I was going to be racing at all uh, a few weeks before that, I really wasn't too bummed on it, was happy to be able to put it behind the gate and get two 30 plus twos in because that's what I need the most is those long motos and experience on those long tracks. So I was really excited about that. First moto, I actually had a decent first lap. I made some good moves and I feel like I was inside the top 30, which, you know, for me, baby steps, you know, that was all right. And then um, I was just really, really struggling to find a flow on the track. My lines were horrible. And then I was struggling with my setup as well. Um, I didn't have any time to do any testing or anything before I came out since it was so last minute. So um, the setup was a little off because of me, of course, I had adjusted it the wrong way because my feedback wasn't good. I was relaying the wrong info, so I had it adjusted wrong. The bike was not doing me any favors in the first moto, and I was basically a passenger on a bucking Bronco for 30 plus 2 at the Fox Raceway course. So it was gnarly. That was kind of along the lines of last year. I was a little bummed on the, the result, but I knew that if we could fix the bike, I, could, I had a lot more in the tank. So... Uh, made a phone call to my guy Chris Maynard at Maynard Racing Performance with the Race Tech Gold Valves. He told me some things to do to adjust and then also my boy Taylor Muto helped me out between motos, um, helped me with my sag and just felt my bike compared to his guy's bike and was just trying to make adjustments based on that. So I really would not have been able to turn it around without those two. Thank y'all very much. We made some huge, 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 like radical changes for the second moto. So I, I charged a couple sections on the site lap. The bike felt a lot better. So. We were in business, we were ready to go, and of course, uh, second turn I fell was way dead last and had to ride back up to the pack, which I felt like I was putting in some good laps, it was consistent, the bike was a lot better than uh, the first moto, but the track was so hairy, there was just ruts everywhere, square edge, I mean, it was pretty much what you would expect the afternoon at a national at Palo to be, it was gnarly, and uh, I was actually, I made my charge up into the 20s and then I had a really sketchy moment in the back and kind of decided to relax a little bit. Got passed by a couple people that, that I had passed earlier in the moto, but I ended up 31st, second moto. So from being down in the first turn, I feel like my riding was better and the result, I mean, obviously it could be a lot better than 31st, but I felt like it was at least something to build on. Like at least I was more in the battle with those guys compared to last year, where last year in the motos, I felt like I was a joke and just riding around and last by myself a lot of the time. So um, it was a step in the right direction. I couldn't complain. I was really tired after the day, but was stoked to start it out um, with two 30 plus twos um, unscathed and putting it in the motos for the first round of the year. And first time at Fox Raceway National, um, really wasn't too bummed on it. I um, was super thankful again for the Mez family for allowing me to stay um, with them the week after Paula as well. So um, that was cool to be able to stay in SoCal and have a little base for a couple extra days. Um, I ended up getting my head, my mod head and cylinder um, put on the bike on Tuesday and went and did some testing on it at Glen Helen with my boy J-Rob. The bike was sick. It was wheeling all over the place. The power was way better. And we were straight up hyped for Hangtown at that point because I was hurting for power on the on the stalker at Paula, so I was super excited to uh, take a step forward at Hangtown. Following Glen Helen the next day, a uh, huge shout out to my boy AP, Aaron Plessinger. He got me hooked up with uh, an appointment to see Dr. G because my neck and back were all kinked up from basically living in the truck for a couple of days. So um, he got me all fixed up, did a couple like sound wave therapy, a few other things. Um, so huge, huge thank you to AP for getting me set up with that. Um, you're a legend, dude. Friday morning, we left at 4.30 in the morning to head to Hangtown. I took my buddy Taylor Muto, Scum Wrench, with me to wrench, which was really nice because he really knows his way around the wrenches and took a lot of the responsibility off of me because I've had a lot on my plate since I'd left. So I was stoked to bring him along. He's a good buddy of mine as well. So we had a lot of fun with it. And man, the program took a hit on the way to Hangtown. I don't even have Bluetooth or anything in my truck. I just run a, a Bluetooth speaker, no choice. And man, the thing cut out on us on the way to Hangtown. I thought the program was screwed. I thought we were done. And we drove a couple hours with uh, radio static and silence. It sucked. And then all of a sudden, the speaker came back to life and we were back in it. Um, we ended up at Hangtown around uh, noon, got parked and watched some press day, just went through tech, did all the normal stuff. And... Uh, we got pitted with our boy Surratt, so that was really nice. We were at a nice low-key pit area. It was a loose program for sure, but it was a good vibes only in the pit. We were really looking forward to, to practice the next morning. I never rode Hangtown before, and I really loved going to new tracks. First practice, first time ever on Hangtown. The track was muddy and sketchy, and my best lap of the session was the second lap of the practice. So my second lap ever riding Hangtown was my fastest lap. Um, all the rest of the laps, I kept making big mistakes and messing up, so... 
Really wasn't doing a very good job putting it together, but I was 28th in the A, which I thought was pretty good for the circumstances. And then the B group barked on me again. There was like 10 of them that were faster. So I think I was in 39th or 40th after the first practice, which wasn't good. We're not in this to be doing LCQs. That's not where we want to be. So really had to put my head down and focus on the second practice and figure out where to make up some time. And luckily I was able to went out in the second practice and just straight up sent it and dropped five seconds a lap off my time from the first one and ended up I think 28th overall considering we were out after the first practice which I thought was going to be faster I was pretty stoked to uh kind of pull it together in a clutch moment and put in a good time to be p28 and again on another track I'd never been to and on some soil and ground that I'm not familiar with um so I I definitely have a lot of factors working against me but I was happy with the morning performance at Hangtown first moto um, you got to stop me if you've heard this before, but I got a bad start. Really, really, really struggled with the track at Hangtown. I felt like Hangtown was even more SoCal, California hard pack than even Paula was. It was really slippery and square edged and just hard all around. So was not able to find one lick of flow on the track at all. Um, it was really hot out as well. I got hot and took my goggles off like a total idiot thinking, you know, I'm not battling with anybody, so I'll be fine. And then of course, people start coming through and laughing at me and just shower me with rocks. So not my brightest moment. We definitely won't be doing it again. And then on top of all that, my Insta360 camera that I was running for some POV footage ended up falling off. Right as I was going through the mechanics area, the mount broke, the camera fell off on my seat and I tossed the camera off the side of the track. And uh, luckily, Bright and Carol's mechanic grabbed it and returned it to my mechanic. So at least we hadn't lost that yet, but stay tuned for more on that. Um, but first moto, was totally horrible, rode pathetically bad. Like I was a little embarrassed actually, especially for my boy Muto that came to wrench for that crappy performance. But first moto, we were P34. We had a lot of thinking to do in between motos to figure out how to pull the head out of the ass to have a better performance for the second one. Um, got some good hydration and food in between motos. We got a nice 30 minute extra break in between motos now that really helps and was actually feeling kind of rejuvenated for the second moto. Another bad start, shocker. And then actually this time having a slow bike saved my life because man, there was such a gnarly pile up in the sec in the first turn of the second moto and pretty much everybody around me was in it except for me. So definitely thankful to have been able to avoid that. Um, and actually was running like 21st for a while. Like I, I saw my pit board say P21 and I thought it was like a typo or something, but um, I was P21, P22 for like 12 to 15 minutes. And I'll be real with you guys. I got so tired, got hot, was smoked, couldn't hang on. I was a hurt unit out there. Ended up fading really bad. Um, still got 26th, which a lot of the reason um, for that was that a lot of people were down on the start, but you gotta be in it to, I would say win it, but you gotta be in it to get 26th, no choice. The riding was really bad, but I was happy that uh, 26th was at least a finish that I could you know, try to build on because um, last season I never even got in the top 30. So um, to jump up to a 26th, I was happy and the potential was there for a lot better result. I just kind of needed to get it together and, and maybe I, if I had that kind of start and that positioning on a track that might suit me a little better, I think we're going to have a lot better shot at it. After the motos, it was a hot day. It was a long day. I was super, super smoked, was kind of feeling sick, had a bad headache, and just all around was feeling like trash. Um, thanks to my boy Muto, he helped me get the truck loaded, and we had it absolutely packed down as tight as you could possibly get it. You, there was no way that you could fit anything else in there, because especially I showed up with the truck full, and then Fox hooked me up with a bunch of extra goodies. So... Um, after their influence on me, I did not have room for anything. And I was supposed to also have my girlfriend coming home with me from Thunder Valley. So we had a lot of planning to do, a lot of rearranging to do, but um, the drive from Hangtown to Colorado was solo with me. So I was able to pack the passenger seat and just kind of, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it for Colorado. But ended up getting my mechanic a hotel since he kind enough to come help me for the weekend and he was basically like a charity for me so I put him in a good hotel and I started hitting the road headed to Colorado I didn't want to do another load and unload in a shady hotel or anything like that so I just hit the road drove eight hours got I think about to the Utah state line and stayed the night in another truck stop in the front seat of the Dakota again no choice and once again I think you just I think if you're tired enough, you can sleep anywhere. Because two nights I slept in the Dakota, I got great sleep. Especially the night after the Hangtown National and then driving eight hours. I think I got like seven hours of uninterrupted sleep in the Dakota. So couldn't complain about that. Didn't have my, my back feeling very good, but we got plenty of sleep. 
spent the entire next day driving, finishing the drive to Colorado, which was actually a really cool drive. I love I love a good road trip and seeing the new new places and all the stuff you drive by is really cool. So I really enjoyed that drive. Um, ended up getting to Colorado by about eight. 8 p.m. on Sunday, so a little bit more than 24 hours after the motos. So we made pretty good time and was there early, um, nice and early to try to acclimate to the altitude, which um, historically my body hasn't been too fond of. So I figured the earlier I got there, the better chance I would have. In Colorado, I was able to stay with some awesome friends of my girlfriend's family and now friends of mine, uh, Super Dave, Ezzy, and uh, Enduro Cross Patty. Big, big thank you to them for allowing me into their home for the week. They had never even met me. They just knew my girlfriend and super fan but um, they still agreed to have me so big thank you to them I wouldn't have been able to do the trip without him and uh, Super Dave he's the man like he's a great mechanic he can do suspension and I mean the first day I was there I was pretty much just passed out sleeping most of the day and I come up to the garage and Super Dave's already done wash my bike wash my gear he started working on stuff rejetting it for the altitude and everything man so Huge thank you to Super Dave. He's a legend. I mean, we even jetted my bike at like 9.30 at night, um, ripping the bike up and down the street just outside his neighborhood. And his response was, ah, that's cool. The neighbors will understand. So um, it was definitely another loose program around there, but it's what I love. So it was a really good time hanging out with them for the week. Um, spent the week trying to get some cardio in to acclimate um, acclimate to that thin mountain air. Went out and checked Thunder Valley out on Wednesday as well. Did some hiking around the track and that was really cool. Was Again, like I said, I really, really love going and riding new tracks. So I was super stoked to, uh, to rip another new one, especially in Colorado. That location's pretty picturesque and sick. And then uh, the best part of the trip thus far, my girlfriend flew in um, from back home. She flew in to Denver on Thursday, which it was also our three year anniversary. So we were able to do Thunder Valley National and our anniversary kind of combined. So that was kind of something that we had thought of even last year, a long time ago. So it was really awesome for that to come to fruition and to be able to do that together. But we did a nice little Red Rocks hike. We got a nice dinner and just relaxed, enjoyed each other's company. I would really missed her for the, the few weeks I was gone. Um, then Friday, we headed to the track. We actually got there on time. Uh, my buddy Grayson Davis and his new wife, Erin, congratulations, you two. Um, they had brought their truck and trailer for us to pit out of for Colorado, so I was super thankful for them and super stoked that, that they showed up as well because they're a really good time and really good friends of ours. So I was just hyped that our pit presence was going to be um, a really good time out in Thunder Valley. But we ended up getting parked, um, had a good spot, and then I actually was fortunate enough to do press at Thunder Valley, which was really cool. And I didn't even realize that you actually do press stuff on press day. I thought it was just riding, but um, I was able to do some interviews with Racer X, MXA, um, Swap Moto Live, which was super cool. I never would have thought those guys would want to talk to me. So thank you to them for including me in their interviews. Um, then we got to do some uh, press day ride and man, the track was so much fun. I love Thunder Valley, but the only thing that was tough, I think, like, the first time I went up the start hill, I was like, oh, man, like, we might be screwed. I mean, the bike was so slow. I mean, there was corners I was having to go down to first gear in, so it was going to be a challenge, but I was up for it. If you guys know me, a little bit of a challenge ain't going to scare me. We were ready to go. Saturday morning, we showed up, and we didn't think it was that deep, and boy, were we wrong, because, wow, the track was a straight-up, like, mud slop, mud bog deep as can be was bogging down the YZ like none other along with the altitude so first practice was rough I only put in like one good lap again so that's on me but uh, after the first practice I was in like the 40s like I was not looking good for qualifying and I thought the track might get slower just because of how gnarly it was getting so um, had to, to put on that hyper focus again and really figure out where I can make up some time and luckily the second practice I somehow managed to drop seven seconds a lap, so I don't know what I was doing in the first practice to be going seven seconds slower. Probably going to have to figure that out soon, but again, was stoked to, to kind of come in clutch with a good lap time like I did at Hangtown and ended up uh, 30th overall, so doing that on a small board at the altitude, I was pretty happy with that. I figured that Thunder Valley and Southwick will be probably the toughest ones for me, so I was happy to get Thunder Valley out of the way and get on the gate, and uh, 230 plus twos, um, that's a lot of riding and a lot of experience on an early track, and that's what helps me out the most, so I um, was stoked to get on the gate for that one as well. First moto, I made some moves in the first couple laps, but I also had a few really sketchy moments on the first few laps. The track was gnarly, and I wasn't riding it like I needed to be. I ended up crashing, taking a bad line, and just having a stupid fall. kind of took me a while to get up, and... 
I actually was thinking about just pulling it in and saving it for Moto 2 for a really good ride. And man, while I was all by myself back there, the crowd was just going completely wild. So I really had no choice but to stay out there and dig. Um, you can't be pulling off whenever you're hearing encouragement like that. But stayed out, rode hard the whole time. Ended up back to P34, so obviously the result was terrible. But, I mean, the effort was there. I was happy to be able to go hard the whole time in the altitude and was actually feeling really good for Moto2 as well. Second Moto, I'm not proud of this one, but I actually almost missed it. I didn't have the schedule on me, and I remembered wrong when I needed to be at the gate, and I almost missed it. They actually had an alternate already in my spot. Cameron Horner, I'm sorry, brother. I did not mean to make them pull you off the gate, man. I suck. I really do apologize. Um, but ended up last gate pick, of course, was far outside. Another bad start. Um, altitude, two-stroke, and uphill, yeah, no good. So bad start. Was way back. And actually, I think this was my best pro national moto I've probably done from start to finish. I felt like I was smooth the whole time. Um, I rode a lot better technically than I have been, was doing a lot of standing up and just riding smarter and went forward the whole time and ended up with a 28th. So I um, was super stoked on how the fitness felt. I actually felt really good until the last two laps and then the bottom kind of fell out and I pretty much come off the track about cross-eyed. I think the altitude about got me and after the race, I was actually feeling really sick, thought I was going to throw up, but we ended up holding it out. Got to do the Racer X post-race post show with Weege and uh, Kellen, which was really cool. I just happened to be walking by at the right time for that. So thank you to them for including me. I appreciate y'all. After that, we spent a day recovering, just hanging out in Colorado, enjoying the scenes and then um, packed everything up, jammed the truck beyond full. We didn't have room for even to breathe really and uh, set out 5 a.m. Monday morning which is kind of like a normal time for me at this point. Between me and my girlfriend we had two drivers so it was pretty easy. We drove straight through and we ended up getting back here at about 8 a.m. on Tuesday so definitely was smoked after all the road trip miles and the motos and just nights in the truck and everything. The week between Colorado and High Point I really wasn't able to get much done. I did, took a lot of naps, was just really sleepy um, was able to get in a couple of exercises, but that's about it. I was pretty smoked and was just trying to, to save everything I had for high point and try to rest up. And I, I honestly, I had some things that I needed to do before high point that didn't get done. Like I really needed to get a new top end put in this thing. And I just was so tired, just didn't, wasn't able to get around to it. And the bike was running great the first few rounds. So I figured it would be fine. And I mean, this, this old girl, man, she was solid. I mean, we did the first four rounds on the same top end, same clutch, same chain, same sprocket. Like we pretty much had the same exact motorcycle from round one to round four. Um, so I thought she was holding up good. Um, we left for high point at about 5 a.m. again with super fan, the legend made his return to the nationals. Um, we ended up getting there about noon. Very thankful for super fan for coming and helping me drive because I was able to get some sleep on the way up there, which I still desperately needed. So thanks SF, appreciate you brother. Another huge thank you um, to KMS Factory Phil. He came on board for High Point and helped me out with all kinds of stuff between like hotel, um, some parts, entries, everything. So thank you to KMS Heating and Cooling and Factory Phil. Couldn't have done it without you. Um, we were supposed to have some press day ride whenever we got there, but unfortunately the rain kind of took that away from us. So we got no riding, no nothing. And uh, the track was plowed pretty deep all day while it was raining. So the track just got completely soaked in deep. The mud was just like insane, like feet deep, sticky, gooey mud. Like I've hardly ever seen anything like it before, but I actually like the mud. So I was excited for it to see what I had against the 450s in the mud, see if I could do any better than than in the dry. I mean, also it was really cool. My family was able to make it out with the exception of my dad who had some duties per always, but was really excited to have a good crew again for high point. Um, first practice, muddy as can be. I kind of thought the first practice was going to be pointless because I thought that uh, they would have the track fixed for the second one. But luckily I put in a good time in the first one at 25th and the track got way worse like they weren't really fixing it the ruts were just getting deeper and the track was getting worse and worse so second practice was actually the one that was kind of pointless i ended up getting passed by i think one guy and ended up 26th overall which was cool that was my best one um yet on the two strokes so nothing to nothing to be upset about there going to the gate 26th and being four for four on qualifying for the first four nationals was um, we're definitely happy about that. We got more work to do, but we're at a good starting point. First moto, I got actually a great jump. I yanked the jump on both people around me on either side of the gate. And then the start was just crazy muddy. I had no chance. I mean, I had a scoop tire and that didn't even do anything for me. Still 
still went into the first turn like 30th probably and I actually thought I had a pretty good first lap I think I was probably around 25th or so and then uh my boy J-Rob crashed on a step up and they had wheels on the ground flags out and I rolled the jump and there was just straight sinkhole soupy mud in between and I landed in second gear when I probably should have been in first and I literally just landed and stopped and got stuck and was just sitting there like trying to get the bike out wide open. Combined with the morning mud, I think doing that just completely fried the rest of the top end, um, which was already on three nationals. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I had no idea high point was going to be how it was. Um, but a couple laps after I got stuck in the mud, I had a fall, got up and was last again. Stop me if you heard this before. And, uh, the bike started detonating, which I've never heard my bike do that. So I ended up pulling it into super fan and it's just not worth it to tear up my whole motor just because the piston's detonating. So I kind of thought we were done. Usually I don't have the parts or anything to do this kind of stuff, but I actually had a top end with me. Um, and then shout out to Jared Lesher and his mechanic. They gave me a base gasket. So I was able to do the swap. Thank you to my boy, Jake Rose for letting me use a pressure washer because we didn't have any pressure washer or water or anything either. Um, so we got the bike washed super quick. And then um, again, thankful for that extra 30 minute intermission because without that, we wouldn't have been able to do it. But uh, with the help of super fan, KMS Factory Phil, Chris Maynard from Maynard Racing Performance. And we even had some fans coming and helping out. Everybody was lending a hand and we got the top end swapped on in about 45 minutes and we made it to the gate for Moto2. Um, everything sounded good. The bike was running way better and was really stoked for another chance at the at the second moto because I thought we were going to be done. Um, so that was really sick how everybody rallied together to get that done for me. But unfortunately, second second moto, I got another bad start and had another first lap crash. Really got to stop doing that. And actually, I think I was doing my best riding of the year on the worst track of the year. The track was insanely gnarly. The ruts were like up to the engine cases everywhere. And I was actually riding good, catching the pack, making some passes. And then about 12, 12 minutes in or so, I landed off a jump and the bike kind of high revved on its own, like kind of like the throttle stuff, but the throttle didn't stick. So I'm not sure if I had an air leak or what had happened. I'm still waiting to get that diagnosed, but unfortunately that led to our second DNF of the day. So we were DNF, DNF on the day for sealing up last overall, no choice. But um, even though the results were a huge bummer, I was happy about my riding and I was really happy about the crew's hustle and and just the pure want to get me out there for the second moto. I really appreciate everyone that, that came together to help me out and do that. And I was stoked too, just, you know, our it would have been easier to give up and just go to the gate and get our money, but we hustled, we kind of took a risk on changing that piston and we got it done. So I was stoked on that. After the race, we did the post-race show again with Weege and even uh, we did some bike revving on the two-stroke. We even got Weege's kid to get up on the bike and do a Bobby Piazza bike rev on the two-stroke. So that was cool. Kind of funny doing that on a DNF, DNF day, but I mean, if we ain't going to get results, we at least got to do something. So it was fun for those guys to include me. I appreciate them having me on the show. Um, and then we loaded back up. We headed straight home. We got to Super Fan's house around two in the morning. And then uh, my girlfriend was at his house watching his dogs and she and I did the rest of the trek to our house, got here around three in the morning and, uh, that brought us to where we are right now enjoying a nice rest week off of riding have still been getting a lot of good cardio workouts in but have been um trying to lay low as much as i can it's been raining like 40 days and nights we need noah's ark so i haven't been able to ride even if i wanted to but um all in all these first four rounds i think we definitely have a lot more positives than we did last year i think our bike setup's a lot better the bike's a lot faster i think my fitness is a lot better which is pretty crazy because i have like no on the bike base for this year so i'm stoked that my off the bike training has been paying off because i've been really working hard on that so i'm um, happy about that happy to be back on the east coast the west at the beginning it was a little bit uncomfortable for me and i didn't really love those tracks so i really think our our best results are still yet to come on some of these Midwest and East Coast tracks that I really like and am comfortable on. Uh, it's been really cool too. Like I've gotten some media attention, gotten to do the Pulp Privateer podcast, um, got to do like big MX radio, some swap moto stuff, um, MXA. Um, it's just been really cool to, to talk to the media. I never thought that, that they would care about what somebody like me is doing or has to say. So i um, thankful for all them for talking to me and fitting me in with their stuff. Uh, my arm pump has been improving. I've been really working hard on the stretches and 
um, everything I've been needing to do for that. And it's been improving. It's not gone yet, but it is getting better. I think my technique is getting a lot better for these national tracks. I've noticed I've been uh, standing up a lot more and just keeping my feet on the pegs and just riding a lot smarter on those tracks. So I'm really happy about that. The starts have been a lot worse, unfortunately. I don't think the grade is helping because everybody just gets sick traction off the gates. So um, the starts have been horrible. I'm going to have to try to work on those if I can find a grade somewhere. But um, all in all, four rounds in, we've qualified for four and we've gotten a couple finishes in the 20s, a couple DNFs, a few crashes. And I mean, overall, we're definitely not bummed on it. As a competitor, I always want to be able to do better, but I think we're at a solid starting point and I think we should only get better. So really, really looking forward to these next four rounds. It should be fun, especially with that finale at Washu will be the, the fourth one of this next run. And that's going to have that big two stroke payday with uh, Carson Brown and all the boys stank dog. I'm sure we'll be out there to try to get it. So that'll be a really interesting one. But um, yeah, looking forward to these next few races, looking forward to seeing um, all you awesome two stroke fans there that watch my channel and follow along. Um, and yeah, thank you guys again for watching and, and following along with me. Last but not least, huge, huge, huge thank you to all the people that support me and have helped me make this happen. I definitely couldn't do it on my own or without any of them. So I'm going to have a list of my sponsors here at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you guys at Redbud. No choice.